Come on, can we stand up and can we worship his name? Come on. So we give you the glory. Say we'll fall. 
Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the honor. Say, will forever. Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the honor. Say, will forever. Praise the name. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy of the glory. You're worthy of the honor. Say, will forever. Praise the name. Clap those hands and give him glory. Amen, amen. Can we have a round of applause for our praise and worship team? Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'll be reading Luke 12, verses 8 through 21. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves but who is not rich towards God. Amen. The daily confession reads, my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. My members, the parts of my body, are instruments of righteousness, yielded to God for his services and for his glory. The devil has no place in me, no power over me, and no unsettled claims against me. All has been settled by the blood of Jesus. I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of my testimony. I love my life not until the death. My body is for the Lord, and the Lord is for my body. Amen. May we all stand for prayer. Lord, we thank you for waking us up to see another day that you have made, O oh God. We ask you to send your angels out to watch over us, people we know and people that we don't know, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the healing that you have put upon us, oh God. The healing of our bodies physically, the healing of our bodies mentally, the healing of our bodies emotionally, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together to be one, oh God, to give your name praise, to give your name worship, oh God. We ask you that you let this word touch every individual that listens, oh God, every individual that is watching, oh God. And we ask you to not let anyone leave this building the way they came in, oh God. We thank you for putting us on this journey, oh God. Even when we cannot see the end of the road, oh God, we thank you for giving us the light. We thank you for giving us the knowledge to lead you, oh God. Even when we are blind, oh God, that you give us the sight to see, oh God. Even when we don't know what's going on, you give us the clarity, oh God. Even when everything looks like it's going wrong, oh God, you give us the knowledge. You let us know that deep down in our hearts that you have it, oh God, and we put it in your hands, oh God. We give you it all to God. Because we know that in the end, you will always make a way, oh God. Because you are able to do the unthinkable. You are able to do the supernatural, oh God. So without a doubt, I give you my all. I don't question what you have for me, oh God. Because I know you will only put my best foot forward, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Can somebody clap your hands all over the building? Can we stand to our feet and give God praise? All the praises, can you stand to your feet and open up your mouths and give them glory? I need you to do me one favor. Look at somebody and tell them the God we serve. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. Can you stand to your feet all over the house? We're not going to be here long today, but can we just ride on this express train? And can we give God the greatest praise we can give him right here? Come on, just open up your mouths and give him glory. 
Come on, we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Father, we're grateful and we bless your holy name. Somebody open up your mouths and give him glory one time right here. If you watch it online, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his holy name, his master's name, his powerful name, his unfailing name together. You know what we say every Sunday is better when we do it. I said it's better when we do it together. When two or three are gathered in his name, his presence comes in the midst of us. So I just need you to open up your mouth, everybody. Just open up your mouth and give him glory right here. Somebody give him the glory. Oh my. Y'all ready? Come on, let's give him glory all over the building. Hey. Hey. I saw the Lord. Seated on his throne And the train of his robe Fills this temple Oh my God In day and night hey. The angels proclaim right here. And they cry Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty Who was in his hand Come on, sing it, be exalted. Be exalted. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. King of heaven. King of heaven. Be glorified. Be glorified. All creation. All creation. Let him testify. Testify. That you're the table.
join them singing holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was in his hand y'all go we going come on say it isn't he beautiful hey and say isn't he beautiful open up your eyes and see him isn't he beautiful isn't he beautiful open your eyes and see him isn't he beautiful isn't he beautiful Open your eyes and see him. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? He got the eyes like fire and the hair like wool. Isn't he beautiful? He's got the feet like brass. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? He's got the eyes like fire and the hair like wool. Let's go. Feet like brass. Hey, oh, isn't he beautiful? 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 Eyes like fire. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? I gotta praise the Lord. Isn't he beautiful? 
you have trusted the Lord or so always and I cannot say and I cannot say rejoice rejoice in the Lord isn't he beautiful his grace is beautiful his creation is beautiful isn't he beautiful If you know the God we serve, he's beautiful. I need you to make a shout of praise in the building. Somebody shout. Shout through your mask. Ooh. Let's go, say, in the inside. Isn't he beautiful? 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 Be exalted, be lifted high. King of heaven, be glorified. Oh, oh creation, testifies. I'm gonna say, You're Jehovah. Mediology. The Lord knows how. The Lord knows Be exalted. Be exalted. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. King of heaven. King of heaven. Be glorified. Be glorified. See all creation. All creation. We're gonna testify. That you're jail, that you're jail. The Lord knows Somebody lift your hands, open up your mouth right here and bless the beauty of the Lord. Come on. We give you the glory, Jesus. We want to see your beauty. We want to see your beauty. We want to see your face. We want to see your glory. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. We want to see your face. We want to see you. So have your way in this service. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. We want to see you. We want to see you. Oh, I want to see you. Look upon his face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. All the streets, I'm gonna lift my voice. All my cares are perils. I'll be home and learn forever too. I'm gonna rejoice. Oh, I wanna see Him look upon His face. There to sing forever. Of his saving grace, all the streets of glory. I'm gonna lift my voice, all my cares are past. I'll be home at last, forever to, forever to rejoice. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not gonna wait till I get there to bless him. But if God's been good to you, you ought to open up your mouth and give him glory in this moment. I'm not going to wait till I get there. I'm not going to wait till he cracks the sky. I'm not going to wait till he calls my name. But right here in this moment, I'll give him glory. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Come on, somebody open your mouth and praise him. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, say, I've got a reason to rejoice. Come on, tell somebody else, I've got a reason to rejoice. Can you clap your hands and give God a real good hand praise? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Clap your hands and give him a real good hand praise. Hallelujah. We praise and we thank God. Amen for you being here with us this afternoon. Amen. I promise. Amen. I won't be before you long. I promise this is in, in a everything about an express service 
Amen. We thank God for Deacon Coleman coming in and getting us set this morning. Amen. He got it so that it's comfortable in the house. Amen. So that you're able to come into the house of worship and not pass out. Amen. We thank God for him and we thank God for you. Amen. Just look at your neighbor and say, thank you for coming. Amen. You could have stayed home. You could have watched online. Amen. But I hope it wasn't just the ice cream that drove you out to church today. Amen. But we praise and we thank God because if you ain't got an amen and a hallelujah, amen, I'll make sure to tell the ice cream truck man to hold your ice cream. Amen. But we came to give God, amen, some praise even on a hot day. Amen. Tell somebody, say, even on a hot day, he's still worthy of the praise. I remember growing up, amen, and going to church on 50 Gulf Street and we didn't have AC. Amen. And I remember one Sunday it was so hot. Amen. Sister Pulley left the church and ran to Home Depot. Amen. And got us some large, amen, turbine type fans. Amen. That Brother James and Brother Shelton sat in the foyer and began to put together. And one by one, as they began to put them together, they brought them in the house. Amen. The house of God. And all it did was blow hot air. Amen. But we churched anyhow. Amen. Is there anybody knows how to praise God anyhow? Amen. We've learned, amen, how to survive some things. Amen. Just tell somebody, say, I've learned how to survive some things. Amen. As a matter of fact, I'm standing here as a testimony, amen, that I am a survivor. Amen. Can you just clap your hands one time and give God a real good hand, praise? Amen. It is not my intent to be before you long. Praise team, you can take your seats. Thank you so much. Amen. Can we give these young people a hand? Come on, you can do better than that. Let's give these young people a hand. Amen. They, they look forward to the fourth Sunday every month. Amen. They always ask me, amen, sometimes it's before the first Sunday of the month, Pastor, are we having, amen, Gen Now Sunday? And I always have to go to the calendar to ask, why are they even asking me this question? Amen. But they are excited about their opportunity to present, amen, every Sunday. And if it wasn't for us having an express service, amen, we would allow them to do what they normally do. But I would... Amen. Thank God for them allowing me this space and time. Amen. To present the word. To present the word of God. Amen. I would. I know you may be a little bit warm down there. Amen. But would you stand to, with, to your feet and grab your Bibles as we go right into the word of God. It's so wonderful to see our overseer with us. Amen. It's so wonderful to see her. Amen. And all of God's people. Amen. Sister Keisha. Amen. Is back with us. Can you clap your hands? And come on, y'all, clap your hands and thank God for her. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. Sister Patricia is back with us this afternoon. Come on, y'all. Make her want to come back. No, I'm just joking. Amen. Sister Julia is with us. Amen. So many folks came out, amen, on a hot day. Amen. Just to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, if you know, you know, we've been trying to finish this series. Amen. On Amen. The power of the unified church. Amen. And y'all just took over the last two Sundays. Amen. So I've got a lot to get to. Amen. In a little bit of time. Amen. But I promise, amen, if you will get with me on this express train, amen, we'll be able to get through all that we have to get through. Amen. In a short period of time. Amen. Psalms 133. If you have it, amen. Shout, I have the word. Amen. If you don't have it, just look on with someone, if you will. Amen. As I want to move on, we thank God for those that are viewing us online. Amen. Pastor Stacy, Sister Zakara, Amen. Evangelist Crenshaw, Minister Austin, Elder Curtis, all of you, Amen, who are on that I'm unable to see. Amen. We thank God for you being with us this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Do you have Psalms 133? Amen. It reads, Amen. Uh, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity it is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments it is like the dew of the Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore Amen. As we continue on in this series, amen, on the power of the unified church today, I want to preach to you, amen, for the next few moments in your hearing, amen, he anointed me in my low place, amen, just tell somebody as you take your seats, he anointed me 
in my low place. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. As we begin to preface, amen, here, Elijah, you can take this for me. Uh, as, as we begin to preface, amen, as we introdu introduced this series, amen, almost a month ago, amen, we began to talk about the power of the church and how the church, amen, to an extent has lost, amen, its power. Amen. We, we come to church Sunday after Sunday. We experience what we experience every week. Amen. But for many of us, we go home the same way that we came. Amen. We're not experiencing the true power of the church, let alone the true power that God has for us. And so we're missing. Tell somebody something is missing. Amen. Not only is something missing, but something is broken. Seemingly because we are consistently found in a place of uncertainty. We are consistently found in a place of wandering. Uh, we are consistently found in a place of uh, melancholy where we are just going through the motions. Where we know that church is what we do on a Sunday because we've been doing it since we were little children. Amen. I know that this is something that I was born into. Amen. I'm not church of God in Christ, but this was something that I was born in. Amen. I was raised in the way. I was not only raised in the way, amen, but I was taught the statutes and the laws of God. Amen. Not only in the house of God, but I was taught these things in my house. All right. I don't have a witness because many of us are living in a place where we are, amen, given choices. Amen. I know this is a youth Sunday and we see many of our youth, amen, are in the house. But, amen, many of our parents, many, can I talk to about the parents for a moment? Many of the parents have given our children, amen, an opportunity to have a choice as to whether or not we're going to go to church. We're, we're given the choice and the option, amen, whether or not we are going to serve God. We are given the choice and an option. Listen, when I grew up, we didn't have a choice. We didn't have an option. One, you was woke, awoke, awakened. Is that the word? You were awakened by the smell of fried chicken and macaroni and cheese and collard greens being cooked at 8 o'clock in the morning. Amen. And that was a sign that it was time to get up because it was time to get ready for church. And if you decided, Julia, that you was not going to get up, amen, because of whatever reason, amen, amen, overseer had a way of banging on that door, amen, reminding you that it's time to get up and get your butt ready for church, amen, and I told the story many times, my, my alarm clock for many years was Rance Allen, because y'all know WYBC play the same songs every Sunday at the same time, amen, so Rance Allen used to come on every time, he said, I'm gonna do your will, and he would come on, and I would come on, and overseer would be in the, in the uh, hallway just dancing, amen, as if she was back in the 70s, and I would just get out, and I would start dancing too, and just mosey on and get in the shower, because I knew Sunday was for church. Tell somebody Sunday is for church. I don't care what you do all in the week. Amen. When it comes down to Sunday, I have my son. Sunday ain't for brunch. Sunday ain't for a get together with the girls. It ain't, amen, for going shotgun with, with the fellas. Amen. Tell somebody Sunday is for church. And when you're brought up in the way the Bible declares, amen, train up a child in the way that they should go so that when they are old, they will not in no wise, somebody say in no wise, they will in no wise depart from it. And we get that scripture a little mixed up because we always begin to talk about when our children are led astray, when our children, amen, when they go into that I've got to find me stage. And we begin to quote the scripture, amen, well he said train them up in the way they should go and they're going to come back. No, the word Word says in no wise will they go astray amen so if we're teaching them and not just allowing amen the church to teach them but we're teaching them on a Monday through Saturday basis there's some things as a parent that you just aren't going to have to worry about amen and the issue that we find can I can I stay on the parents just one more minute and I promise I'm gonna move on the issue that we find within the parents uh, is that we're allowing everybody else to teach them but we're not teaching them 
y'all ain't going to say amen, all right? Amen. We're allowing school to teach them, amen, arithmetic. We're allowing schools to teach them mathematics. And now we're allowing the schools to teach them who they are. Amen. But the devil, somebody stop. The devil is a liar. Amen. Because in the word is the truth. Amen. The word of God, we find our hiding place. And it is in the word of God that it tells us about who we are. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. We are created by God to be more than conquerors. And we don't have to depend on what society dictates for our children. Somebody say, I know that's right. I know that's right. And so we're in a place where, amen, we have lost, amen, our power. We have lost our zeal. We have lost, amen, what it is that God has commanded us because we must understand that even though we have the safe place in the sanctuary, that our home is to be our first tabernacle. Our home is to be, amen, the first place that our children are taught the things of God. Amen. I have a habit of reminding now my children children understand amen that even on a Sunday basis I am requiring them uh, to let me know what it is that I preach let me know what my sermon topic was uh, or if anybody else is preaching what was the sermon topic what was the three and they have it down to a T where they're able to tell us exactly what happened in the service and what it was uh, that they learned why is it because uh, that I have to why is it that I have to ask them these things uh, because we have to understand that there is a real enemy on the outside of these doors uh, that it's consistently attacking their minds uh, that's consistently attacking their emotions uh, that's consistently attacking their spirit uh, and if you are not filling them with the right thing they're bound to be filled uh, with the wrong thing somebody say lord help me Lord help me because we've got to be able to hold on to this generation for another season. We've got to be able to hold on to this generation for another dispensation of God's grace. But yet when we come into the church instead of seeing a church united we're seeing a church divided we're, 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 we're finding out that there's a many people that sit next to us and that praise with us but they're not praising for us amen but they're really jealous about the things that God is doing in our lives and you be honest you've seen it to where there are people that will look at someone with a spirit of jealousy because of what it is that they see happening within their lives what they see God doing within their bodies what they see God doing within their minds and they begin to ask God the question not celebrating what God is doing but then they begin to ask God the question well what am I doing wrong how in the world did you bless them when I know about their ends and how in the world did you bless them when I know about their house how in the world are you interceding or how in the world are you consistently amen providing for them when I am sitting here and I'm praying amen all the prayers that I can pray I'm singing all the songs that I can sing I'm shouting all the shout that I can shout but yet and still I don't see the hand of God move in my life let me ask ask it this way have you ever wondered why there are some people who don't even like you when you don't even really know them you you just trying to figure out what is the issue what what's really your issue I, I, I try to speak to you on a weekly basis but some how or another you just found it in your spirit uh, not to like me and we call it amen we call it amen in the church world we call it amen I discern something ain't right about them uh, amen but all the while it ain't something wrong with them but it's really something wrong with you because you ought to be able to pick up within yourself that there's something within them that needs amen sometimes some folks I know it's COVID season but sometimes some folks just need a hug sometimes folks just need a pat on the back to tell you amen that you're gonna be all right I know you're in a trying season uh, but we're in this place amen and in this position uh, that is not really me but it's their insecurity that's causing them to have a spirit that doesn't like me it's insecurity that causes jealousy it's insecurity that causes malice it's it's insecurity that causes strife I ain't did nothing to you but yet and still you find a way to have to have conversations about me you find ways to put me in your chat y'all ain't talking to me you find ways to tell everybody else about the issues that you have with me instead of coming to me as a good Christian 
as a as an overseer, as a and let me not even say this, uh, first lady. It's not. It doesn't even have to deal with you being a good Christian. It has to deal with you, Sister Karen, being a mature adult. Don't, don't go on Facebook throwing sublim subliminal messages. Thank you. I'm trying to get this through. Throw, throwing subliminal messages at me because, and they talk about some. Well, if the shoe fit, no, no, no. We 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 we've we've learned we we've we've, we've uh, that that's it, brother Elijah. We've perfected, amen. Shadiness in the church. Now, don't get me wrong. You're talking to Pastor Shady right here. I I know how to throw shade, mother counsel. I know how to do it. I know how to make sure you're covered under the shadow of the shade. I know how, I know how to, Brother Albert, I know how to do that. But, 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 <laughs> but I'm not going to throw shade on anyone unknowingly. Brit, Libra, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to throw shade on you that I ain't shaded you in person. Hello, somebody. We, we just get so in a place where we just throw in darts and, and, and daggers and, and bullets, amen, with the intent of harming somebody. And, I'm, and we, we, the way we post it, we, I, I, I need them to see it. Oh, I want them to see it. I, let me go check my story so I can make sure they see it. Y'all know how y'all check those stories? I don't, if you don't know, I'll show you later. You can check and see who watches stuff. Tell somebody they seen it. They, they, they understand. But this is where the enemy, Elder Devana, this is where the enemy throws in the spirit of division and the spirit of discord and tell somebody it's right in the house of God. It's right in the house of God. One of the reasons why the devil tries to keep factions and separations in the church is because he knows that if we ever get together, that we'll be unstoppable. So he'll consistently throw things at you to cause you to think that, amen, Sister Kanijah and Brother Devon is really having issues. And so rather than praying for them based on what you've discerned, look at that word, we discern that they have issues, we're going to go and talk to Sister Kanija and stir up something within her spirit against her own husband. I'm just using y'all as an example. Because we're insecure within ourselves that they have a young and successful marriage. Y'all not talking to me. How, how old are y'all? 25 years old, right? And they are young and they're married, but here I am, 40-something. And I done been in relationship. I done been engaged. And they ain't doing something right because if, if they could find it, I would have been found it. Huh? And we begin throwing bullets and daggers and trying to get a sister Kanaja. Hey, girl. I know you got to wear that head right for him because I heard. That's how, that's how we do church. She said that's what they do. Because we're trying to separate what God has joined together because we're insecure. Because we are having uh, uh, issues dealing with jealousy. We're, we're having issues dealing with malice and, and strife. And, and we allow the enemy to get in our head to try to divide something else. But tell somebody, say the devil is a liar. And I'm moving and we, 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 we got to understand that even in our communities, Brother Dion, we, our communities would be so much further ahead, amen, if we would just learn how to do things together. I was sharing with the uh, young people just a few weeks ago and I said the problem, they were trying to plan something. And I told them, I gave them some wisdom and I said push it back just a little bit because you're going to find yourself in a period where you're competing with events. And, and when you're competing with the Vince, you're going to give so many people the opportunity to go here and to go there. And they're not going to know what to do. And because you're trying to do something with a good cause, people are going to start weighing out options and deciding, amen, on what, when in actuality, we can just, somebody say, come together. Amen. And not have, amen, not, this ain't their idea, amen, but not have a book bag drive on this corner one Saturday and then literally right across the street have another book bag drive. All in the name of popularity. 
all in the name of making sure our name is on top. Oh, we were, we, were, uh, we, we were a part of some things some years. And they had a nerve to do what we've been doing for years and not invite us. And do it, Sister Karen, right in front of our porch. And when we found out, there was no issues. We went in and wanted to be a part of it. But when we got there, the people that were putting it together looked at us like, we didn't expect you to be here because we weren't invited. Because the spirit, somebody say, of jealousy is strong. And when you see somebody doing what it is that you want to do, amen, they will say, well, I'm not going to invite them because I don't want them to think that we're copying. Ain't nobody copying. Don't the word say ain't nothing new under the sun. I heard Overseer Williams say some years ago, we've been saying it ever since. It's better when we do it, somebody say, together. So unity is something that we've lost. How much time I have? Ah. Unity is something that we've lost in the church, is lost in the community, and we've lost it in pursuit of selfish endeavors. Everybody's out for me, myself, and I. And it's right in the church. And David said how beautiful and how pleasant it is for people to dwell together, somebody say, in unity. This is the picture of someone that's being brought into unity. And then is given the responsibility of keeping the unity that they were brought into. So that if you don't mess it up, we can keep it. One of the things that, amen, I, one of the new members told me when they first came into the church, Amen. They said that everyone that has they've spoken to, when they've spoken in reference to this ministry, has spoken on the power of the unity within this body. Let me tell you something. You only see miracles when the church is united. You'll only see true, true breakthrough when the church is united. You'll only see, Sister Karen, true deliverance when the church is united. Amen. Every now and then God will allow it. He's done it the last few weeks. He'll allow his power to come and to reign in this place to where we can't move in selfish agenda. He's coming. He's reigning in this place to where we can't move. Amen. In selfish motive. He's coming. He's reigning in this place to the point where we have no, uh, amen, no unction but to lift up our hands and to give him glory. Amen. And if you will testify the power of God that's been in this house the last few weeks and dare I say the last few months has been uncanny. And it's only because you have the power of a unified church. Tell somebody you've got to be united. Mm, and he says if we keep the unity God is going to keep pouring out the oil where he has commanded his blessing somebody lift up your hands and say Lord I need the oil come on say it like you mean it say Lord I need the oil uh, it's the oil where God has commanded the blessing and God says that I am a God who believes not only in the unity but here's the word again I believe in community he says in the first place the only way that you can have unity here we go is to understand the value of you I'm going to close here I'm getting ready to close he says the only way that you can have unity is that you understand the value of you just look at somebody and say I understand the value of you and tell the truth if you don't understand you, you're going to understand by the end of this sermon amen just tell somebody say I understand the value of you mm. And now when he says, uh, Brother Dion, that I understand the value of you, I don't mean the understanding the value of pointing to yourself, uh, but rather I mean the value of you pointing to someone else. Just, just I know it, 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 it's, it's rude and, and Mother Counsel, please forgive us for pointing, but just point at somebody on the other side of the room and just tell them, say, I understand the value of you. I, under, I understand you. Now, now tell them, say, you've got to value me. You, you, you've got to you, you don't have to understand me but you've got to value me you don't, you don't have to like me but you've got to value me you ain't got to text me and call me all time tonight but you've got to you tell somebody you better value me 
you better. He said, he said, you have to value me. He said, it's like the oil. Amen. Hallelujah to God. He said, it's like the oil flowing from the head of Aaron. And Aaron was, Aaron was the high priest. And whenever you anoint the high priest, they spent, amen, praise God, expensive and costly oil. Amen. One of the points was being made is that no matter how much the cost, it's not going to be a waste. Because I see more value in you. Amen. And the less value amen I see more value in you uh, not necessarily saying that I don't see value in myself uh, but it's just saying that I'm going to push you uh, into the next place that God has for you why because I value you and I know uh, that this is a foreign word to this generation because uh, this new generation values things more than we value people in fact we treat God as if God values things more than God God values people which is why we spend an inordinate amount of time in church asking God to give us stuff we pray we don't pray for a, a, a contrite spirit and, and on a, a, a broken spirit and a contrite heart uh, but rather we're consistently asking God for the job we're, we're, we're consistently asking we get vain with it and we're, we're asking God for clothes and we're asking God amen for the material things uh, but God says I can't do something extravagant for you uh, until you allow me to do something extravagant in you. Something about you has to change. Something about you has to be reversed. Something about you has to be amen in total submission. So he says I can't do something extravagant for you uh, until you allow me to do the extravagant thing in you. In other words uh, I can't do the extravagant thing for you without it being a waste for me. And God said I'm not going to waste my oil on someone uh, that doesn't know how to use it I'm not going to waste my oil on someone that's not been through the fire I'm not going to waste my oil on somebody that's not been through the flood I'm not going to waste my oil on somebody that don't know how to take a licking and keep on ticking I'm not going to waste my oil I'm not going to waste my oil. So if, if, if I'm going to do something in conjunction with you, uh, then it has to be important not only to you, but it has to be important to me. The only way to have value in the church is when we value each other over self uh, to the extent that we will do for them beyond what it is, uh, that we will do for ourselves. I'm reminded, I'm reminded, Sister Christina is in the back. I'm reminded of my God mother and how many times she will go above and beyond uh, beyond her actual means and what it was uh, that she had just to make sure that I her godson had what it was that I wanted there were times of uh, amen that I didn't need it but she made sure I had brownies there were times that I didn't need it but she made sure I had a seven up cake there was times where I didn't need it but she would bring me down to Whaley sample and buy me a brand new suit in spite of what it was that she didn't have as a matter of fact, she would take me down to Macy's and buy me a suit, y'all. Amen. In spite of what it was that she may not have had physically, even down to the point where she was on death's door, she was still making sure that Pastor Corey had what he had. Why? Because I had moved from a place, amen, praise God, of being her godson uh, to a place of being her pastor. Uh, and she would always say, I've got to make sure my pastor is good. Uh, I've got to make sure that he has what he needs to have. Uh, there was a time in my life where I was unemployed uh, and she came in my door with a check for my rent uh, just to make sure that I had even though she and her house was struggling uh, she said I see value in you uh, and I see where it is God is trying to take you uh, and I'm not going to allow the enemy of your soul uh, to tear you down uh, to make you feel like you're not going to make it uh, to make you feel like you're not going to win uh, she had a resolve within herself uh, that said even though I may be in a low place uh, I'm going to make sure that he gets to the high place uh, touch your neighbor and say neighbor uh, say I don't care where I am right now uh, because I see the value in you uh, I'm getting ready to pour some oil uh, because I see the value in you uh, I'm getting ready to release what I have uh, so that you might have I'm closing 
I'm closing. And so she says here, he says here, he says here, it's like the oil. Can I close? I said, can I close here? He said, it's like the oil. Mm -hmm. It's like the oil that flows down even from Aaron's beard. Now, you must understand the anointing oil. Somebody say the anointing oil. Mm, the anointing oil. The anointing oil was made up of several ingredients. It was made up of myrrh. It was made up of cinnamon. It was made up of calamus. And, and it was made up of cassia. And all of those things were used to make of the oil uh, of the anointing or the ointment of God. Uh, this was the oil that was used not only in consecration uh, of the high priest. Uh, but this was the oil that was poured on the head even uh, at the burial, time of burial. Uh, and the only way for you to find uh, the only way you can find value in somebody else uh, is for something within you to die uh, to die towards them uh, I know that there are many in here uh, that may have issues with somebody else uh, whether it's in this house or in another house uh, you found yourself envious to them uh, because of what it is that God is doing for them uh, but the only way you can find value in somebody else and uh, it's for something to die within you toward them uh, the only way I can value you over me uh, is I've got to kill something within me uh, that makes me want to value me over you uh, I've got to kill selfishness uh, if I want to find value in somebody else uh, I've got to learn how to kill my own personal agenda uh, if I want to find value in somebody else I've got to learn how to kill my likes and my dislikes because to love you over me means that I've got to kill what wants to make me put me over you so that you can know that I value you more than I value myself in other words I've got to die to the flesh I've got to die to the self man I've got to learn how to die to myself and I've got to seek to be a blessing to you first I've got to learn how to pray for you first I've got to learn how to encourage you first because what I've learned and what I've discovered here is that when I get my eyes off of me and then I put my things my eyes on the things that are around me that God will always take care of me when I'm busy blessing somebody else is there anybody in this house that can be a witness and testify uh, that soon as I stop worrying about myself uh, and I began to focus on the things of God uh, and how God would tell me to put something uh, in somebody else's hand uh, y'all know what I'm talking about the old school Holy Ghost handshakes uh, that when you took your hand back uh, there was something in your head uh, and it was just what you needed uh, at just the right time uh, is there anybody in here uh, that can testify and say uh, that when I decided uh, to bless somebody else uh, by the time I got back to my issue uh, God had already taken care uh, of everything uh, and things began to work itself out uh, on my behalf uh, that's why I heard the word say uh, and we know uh, that all things uh, work together uh, for the good of them uh, that love God uh, and to those uh, that are called uh, according to his purpose uh, he says it here now uh, that it's like the anointing uh, upon the head of Aaron uh, and it goes down uh, to his beard and to his shoulders uh, and it goes down uh, uh, down to his breastplate uh, now you've got to understand uh, by history research and study uh, and I'm getting ready to let you go uh, that when it flowed in the breastplate uh, of the high priest uh, that the oil flows on uh, were the names uh, of the 12 tribes of Israel uh, so that the oil flows uh, 
down from the head uh, it will flow down uh, upon every tribe uh, that has every family uh, that's a part of the nation uh, that the priest is over uh, so in other words uh, God can anoint the head uh, without anointing those uh, who are part of it uh, I dare you to lift up your hand uh, and shout Lord uh, help me be a blessing uh, to my head uh, in other words uh, you gotta be careful now uh, how you put your mouth uh, on the man of God uh, you've got to be careful now uh, how you put your mouth uh, on your pastor uh, you've got to be careful now uh, and you've got to learn uh, when God says a bless him uh, the man of God uh, that the oil uh, I said the oil uh, I said the oil uh, it will flow down uh, from the head uh, all the way down uh, onto the breastplate uh, that's why I tell folk um, uh, that you can't say uh, a whole lot of stuff um, uh, but one thing you're not gonna do uh, is talk about my pastor uh, one thing you're not gonna do uh, is talk about my house uh, one thing you're not gonna do uh, is talk about my leadership uh, because as the oil uh, as the oil uh, as the oil uh, as the oil flows uh, from the head uh, it's gonna flow down uh, and it's gonna bless him uh, it's gonna bless him uh, bless him uh, bless my life uh, and it doesn't stop there uh, but it gets a little better uh, the Bible says now uh, and I come to my close uh, was that the third one y'all uh, that means it's the last one uh, it says as it flows down uh, flows down down from the head uh, down to the garment uh, you have to understand uh, I know Elder Curtis is watching uh, and he can testify to this uh, that the garment had a cuff uh, so that when the oil flows uh, the oil was gathered uh, it was gathered in the cuff uh, so that the cuff there uh, had gathered uh, a bunch of oil uh, so then it flowed from the head uh, and it gathered, uh, gathered down to the hem, uh, and the hem is uh, the lowest point, uh, the lowest point of the garment. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? Uh, the lower, uh, the lower I go, uh, the more anointing, uh, the more anointing I have. Uh, don't worry uh, about your low place, uh, because the lower uh, you can get. Uh, the great and uh, your anointing uh, I know they're talking about you uh, cause you should be further along uh, but tell them uh, I'm just in uh, my gathering place uh, I'm gathering uh, my oil uh, I'm not just getting uh, myself together uh, but I'm here uh, to gather uh, my anointing uh, I'm here uh, to gather my glory I'm here to gather what it is that I need so that I I, 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 I might be able to stand up somebody in here needs to understand and identify that when you get to your lowest point that the place of, the, of your grace anointing uh, that's why uh, I can declare uh, like Job said uh, though you to lay me uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh, yet will I trust him uh, I've seen him come through uh, too many times uh, not to doubt uh, the hand of God now anybody in here in this room today ever to wonder when things got low how you were able to keep on smiling in your low place keep on rejoicing in your low place 
Keep on laughing in your low place. Keep your hands lifted in your low place. Keep on shouting in your low place. Keep on believing in your low place. Keep on praising in your low place. Keep on worshiping in your low place. Because I, 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 Head, uh, the Lord say uh, that it's in your low place uh, that you're gonna find uh, your greatest your greatest anointing uh, it is in uh, your low place uh, that you will receive uh, power uh, from on high uh, power uh, to sustain uh, even in uh, my low place uh, power uh, to persevere even in uh, my low place uh, power uh, to go on uh, in Jesus name uh, even in uh, my low place uh, for I hate uh, I heard the Bible say uh, that he anointed the uh, yeah he anointed the uh, my head uh, with oil uh, and my cup uh, my cup running over and uh, surely uh, surely uh, surely uh, goodness and, uh, and mercy uh, shall follow me uh, all the days uh, of my life uh, and I I will dwell, I'm not gonna leave, but I'm gonna dwell, I'm not gonna run, but I'm gonna dwell, I'm not gonna skip out, but I'm gonna dwell, I'm not gonna give up, but I'm gonna dwell, I'm not gonna throw in the towel, but I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm getting ready to leave now, but I got one question. Has anybody ever found themselves in a low place? And I wonder how you've been able to survive. I've come to prophesy that you've been anointed for your low place. How do you give your neighbor a good high five and say, neighbor, you've been anointed in your low place. No, you wanted to cry, but you've been anointed in your low place. No, you wanted to give in, but you've been anointed in your low place. Had someone walk away, but you've been anointed, anointed, anointed with oil. Wondering how I made it. I'm still in my low place, but I, I, I got a feeling that any day he's getting ready to lift me up. I got a feeling any day that he's getting ready to pull me out. Don't despise your low place, but cabin. Gather the anointing, gather the, gather the glory, gather the, don't mind me when you see me on my knees, I'm just gathering my glory, don't mind me when you see me praising in the hard place, I'm just gathering the oil, cause I, I, I got a feeling uh, that if he allowed me uh, to survive uh, my low place, uh, that he's getting ready, he's getting ready, he's getting ready uh, to set me up. Uh, give your neighbor uh, a high five uh, and say, neighbor, don't worry about where you are, where you are right now, because I. I've got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right. If the devil had any power, he would have killed me before I got to my low place. But what he didn't realize was all he was doing was putting me in position 
to gather my oil. I needed something to make it to my promise. I needed something to make it to my destiny. So he knocked me down. I may have cried a little while. I may have been confused a little while. I may not understood a little while. But through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I've learned how to depend upon his word. For some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but as for me, as for me, as for me, I will trust in the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is a strong town where the righteous run in and they are saved. Anybody can testify that I'm so glad that I did not die in my low place. I dare you. Take the next 60 seconds. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Oh, come on. Praise him like you're coming out of your low place. Praise him like you're coming out. Praise him like you're coming out of the low place. Praise him like you're coming out. Hey! Praise him like you're coming out. 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 So it's not, it's not, Sister Danina, a, a merely a test of survival, but it's a test of self-will versus his will. It's, 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 it's not a test of, Sister Karen, what I want to do. Uh, it is a test of what I want to do versus what he wants me to do. It's, it's a gathering place of of my thoughts and the gathering place of strength it's a it's the him it's it's overseer the low place the lowest place of the garment and it's where all the oil is stored and reserved until the necessary time of release so hear what I said First lady, it's the lowest place of the garment, but Sister Julia, it's where the oil gathers until the necessary time of release. Let this bless somebody. If at least 20 people in here and those watching online, your necessary release is at hand. You're necessary. He said, get ready for the oil to flow again. Get ready for the oil. I said, you're moving from survival to thriving. Get ready for the oil to flow. He said, he said, this next release, Sister McMillan, this next release is necessary. What, what happens? I was going to save this for next Sunday. Old ECC and OFC, y'all know this. When, when, when oil, 
Oil is only produced through pressure. It, it, it's, it's only produced through pressure. Somebody say, Lord Jesus. So when the pressure becomes great enough, it releases the oil to flow through. I, I don't care how much you could put the, the olives in the, in the basket, but it's not until there has been enough pressure. There's an there's a automatic, and it's been around for centuries. There's an automatic pressure valve on the inside of the barrel. But it's not until there is enough pressure in that barrel that that lever is then released and what's on the inside begins to ooze its way on the outside. The reason why you haven't seen God's hand move is because you haven't experienced enough pressure. But the Lord sent me here to 61 Arling Street to tell you that the pressure is about to be released. The pain is about to be released. The oil. It's been a struggle for too long. But God said he's already released you. And I'm getting ready to cause you to walk into overflow. I know you survived the pressure a long time. But he said I'm getting ready to take the weight off your shoulder. I'm getting ready to take the weight and I'm getting ready to take the sting out of defeat. I'm getting ready to cause you to walk in continual victory. I need somebody to open up your mouth and give God praise for release. Come on, there's release in here. Come on, there's release in here. Hey! Come on, church. We got to get out of here. But I tell you, don't open up your mouth. Y'all don't turn this express service into Terry. I tell you, don't open up your mouth. If you need to release. He said release is in your mouth. Oh. Release from depression. It's in your mouth. Release from oppression. He said it's in your mouth. Release from the old man, come on. Release from stereotypes. It's in your mouth. Hey. Come on, somebody don't even need to talk. You just need to open up your mouth and scream. Open up your mouth and scream. I said open up your mouth and holler. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. Let it flow, 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 come on church. Come on, church. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. He's anointing me for my low place. 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 Say yes. Say yes. He's anointed me. He's anointed me in my low place. That's why I couldn't die. So I couldn't give up. Because my anointing in the low place that I had to experience was necessary. Was ne absolutely necessary. 
and it was an integral part of my development we'll talk about the dark phases of development next Sunday as we close out we prepare to close out restoration fire revival but I have to go through those low places and I have to go through those dark seasons and and if I'm not careful because of allowing the spirit of jealousy to to rule and to abide amen I won't be able to receive the true help that I need because the person that I've been talking about is the one that God sent to help deliver me but because I don't see them as help I see them as a hindrance you know the man one of my first messages was about the man on the Jericho wall road and the pain and the trauma that he had to feel after being mugged and robbed and left on the side of the road for dead and when after he saw those that came that should have helped him and they didn't help him every time he heard those footsteps he had to wonder is this pain coming again is this trauma coming again that's many of us we're on that Jericho road where we experience pain and 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 we experience trauma and we experience defeat and when God sends somebody to help us we can't help but wonder are they really a help are, are they a hindrance God said that's not for you to worry about but for you to open yourself even in the low place to receive help from unexpected sources I prophesy that now help is coming to this house from unexpected sources come on you that's a place for you to lift your hands and receive it I said help is coming from unexpected sources I'm praying for those that are in a, a low place and questioning the hand in the direction of God receive help now come on just lift your hands let's just dwell here for a moment receive help now oh. receive help now receive help receive help now come on let's just dwell here for a moment Jesus thank you my help I don't know if you know that my help my help all of my help cometh from the Lord, my help, my help, my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord, my Come from the Lord, my help, my help, oh my help, all of my help, come from the, one more time, oh my
coming from the Lord Father we need you today someone is in the valley of their low place and they don't see their way out they don't see their way through they don't see their way over Father today give them that assurance ah yeah the assurance to know that you are with them even now. Father, help them to call on you for their help. For no other help we know how you. You are our help. In the time of storm, you are our help. In the time of confusion, you are our help. And Father, that's what we decree you to be right now. Father, we send your help. To Yale New Haven Hospital. To be with Sister Paula and to be with the family. And God, as we see week by week the progression of the miracle that you have performed in her life. We thank you now in advance for the finished work. God, I said we thank you now in advance for the finished work. I said we thank you now in advance for the finished work. Even now, as a collective body, we send your help to Minister Toya. We send your help to her family. We send your help to this body. As we're grieving and as we mourn, Father, we know that in all things, you're yet sovereign and that you will get the glory out of this. But Father, she needs your help. Help her to make it into her tomorrow. Help her to see that there's still destiny that awaits her. We send the help of God and the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide. We declare it now that you are our help. No other help we know in the name of Jesus come on clap your hands and give God a hand praise come on clap your hands and give God a hand praise come on clap your hands and give God a hand praise oh God hallelujah come on just tell somebody say I've got my help come on tell somebody say I've got my help tell somebody I've got my help Thank you, Jesus. Come on, take your seats in the presence of the Lord. We're getting ready to dismiss. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't hire ya. Tell somebody, when I understand the purpose of my low place, I will walk around complaining. Just tell somebody, this is the place of the gathering. Take your hand and just do it like they say, this is the place of the gathering gathering the glory of the Lord ah yeah I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not going to belabor the hour we're moving but tell somebody say he anointed me in my low place I'm still here because he anointed me bring that offering bucket before we tear this place up he anointed me lady sherry do me a favor get up and start dancing for minister toya I love it. I told Lady Sherry to get up and the rest of y'all jumped up. Oh! May she receive strength. I said this is a praise for strength. She's not going through this by herself. 
but she's got a whole church to undergird her. Oh yeah. We love it when we see your praise. Oh! I said we love it when we see your praise. Come on, come on. Clap your hands right here. Oh. That's it, church. Everybody clap your hands up. We're praising God. Hey! Y'all know my deal. Hey! Come on, clap your hands for a little while. Come on.
Miss Lucille Patty. You got your help. Sister Paula. You got your help. Come on, 30 more seconds. Come on. She said, that's enough. Martha Brown was here. She said, that's enough. Take your seats. Please accept your seats. Brother Corey, please sit down. Sister Danina, please sit. Elijah. 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 So, no, 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 no. What we're not gonna do is keep this going. Y'all play too much. You were supposed to help them sit down, Lisa. Well, praise them, young people. Bring it in. Aaron, no. This is Jen Now Sunday. I said, This is Jen Now Sunday. This is their Sunday. That's enough. I need you to 
find that same energy when you go in your pockets. Find that same energy. Come on, y'all. Y'all, we gotta go. Y'all done made the ice cream man come inside. I need y'all to... They done made the ice cream man leave his truck. All right, y'all can stay over there. I need the rest of y'all to get your offerings. Your tithe, your offerings, your love gifts. Journey, put up the Restoration Fire Revival announcements. Cause we gotta go. I'm tired. This Wednesday night we're here in Prayer Revival at 7 p.m. Thursday night, somebody say Thursday. We welcome Apostle Michael Dinsmore and Community Tabernacle Fellowship will be with us. Amen. Empowerment, I need you here. I need you here, Empowerment. Friday night, Pastor Jonathan McLaren from Ark City Church in New Jersey will be with us. Empowerment, I need you here. Saturday, we will be doing baptism at Macedonia Church of God in Christ, 151 Newhall Street at two o'clock. Empowerment, let's be there to support these young people and these candidates as they are going into baptism, amen? Saturday at 2 p.m., we wanna be there to support them. Amen, I promise you, amen. It'll be no longer than an hour, if that. Amen, but we're going to get in and we're going to get out. But we want to support these people, amen, these candidates as they, as they are being baptized. Amen, and then Sunday, somebody say Sunday. Sunday. We are right back here, amen, at the Empowerment Christian Church as we celebrate our, amen, our Restoration Fire Revival. Amen, I will be speaking at the 12 o'clock service. Amen, come on, you can clap. Amen, you better clap for me. Amen. Amen, and then Sunday night, somebody say Sunday night. Amen, we will be with Apostle, Amen, Apostle, uh, Prophet, um, Andre Cook will be with us, thank you. Amen, will be with us at 6 p.m. Amen, please, amen, listen. Amen, we are preparing, amen, whether or not the service should be here or in another venue. So please make sure you pay attention to both, amen, our realm, amen, for first information, amen, and to our social media pages, amen, for it to be posted, amen, whether or not there is a change in venue for Sunday night, amen, amen. But this week, somebody say this week, amen, is going to be off the hook, amen, and I need everybody to bring somebody, amen. What did I say? I need everybody to do what? Everybody to bring somebody. Amen. We're also reminding you that meet time with friends has been rescheduled due to the extreme heat this week to August 27th. Amen. Amen. So those of you that are not able to attend, please let us know and we will give you the refund uh, that may be necessary. Amen. And then if you are coming, you can come and bring another friend. Amen. Bowling. The youth department will be doing sponsoring a bowling trip on August 6th at 6.30. Amen. From 6.30 to 9.30. Amen. Three hours of unlimited bowling. Amen. The cost is only $25. Amen. We're asking all of ECC to bring at least four people, right? I already got my four. I got my four. Amen. And I'm going to be bringing some more. Amen. Amen. So we want you to bring, amen, at least four people, amen, on the 20, the 6th, amen, at 6.30, amen. Amen. The announcement should be posted. Amen. We also are excited because our first lady is being honored. Amen. They're honoring Bloom, amen, beautiful ladies overcoming opposition masterfully, 
amen, also known as Bloom, is honoring our First Lady Sherry Salisbury as a, re as a recipient of the Flomus Award for your, ser for your faithfulness to those you serve, amen, has not gone unnoticed. This event will take place July 30th at 6 p.m. at Cascade. Fine catering, amen, at 480 Sherman Avenue. Amen, Sister Journey, you already got it posted, praise God. Amen, will take place, amen, please contact Lady Sherry for tickets. Amen, please contact Lady Sherry for tickets, amen. We wanna go, amen, we wanna have at least five tables, amen. Um, we want, But we wanna go in full support, amen, amen, of our first lady, because nobody can honor our own better than we can, amen. So if they're gonna honor her, we're gonna be there to support it, amen. Amen, that is July 30th. What did you, Coleman, you said enough? The location for bowling is Amity Bowling Alley. Amen. There's a flyer out. Amen. Those online, you see it. Amen. Is, is there anything else? Amen. The, the home going service, amen, for Brother Jalen will take place next Monday at Trinity Temple Church. Amen. Amen. The, the services have been entrusted to the McClam Funeral Home. Amen. So we're asking those. Amen. Just be there. Amen. We've already reached out to those that we needed to be a part of the service. Amen. We are taking a portion. Amen. Of the repast responsibility. Amen. If you want to assist in any of those things, please see Minister Keisha. Amen. As she will be spearheading that. Amen. We're asking. Amen. If you need to make a donation. Amen. To Minister Toya. Amen. She's not asked. She's literally not asking for anything. But we know what the church does because we are a community, right? Amen. So we support one another. So when one is hurting, we all hurt. Amen. And this literally hurt. Amen. Amen. So we, we're, we're all going through this together. But we want to make sure that we're there to lift her up because it's not about us. It's not about us. But it's about supporting. Amen. Somebody else. So the funeral, the homegoing service. Amen. Is going to be Monday the first. Amen. This first Monday right after Restoration Fire Revival. Amen. Did I say that right? Restoration Fire Revival. Amen. That Monday at 10 o'clock. Amen. And she's also asking that no one wear black. She said she don't want to see nobody in black other than your skin. Amen. She wants you to wear uh, red and white uh, or whatever combination of it you have. So either all white, all red, or a combination of the both. Amen. That's pretty simple, right? Amen. Uh, amen. That's it. I got everything. Come on. Now you should have your offering in hand by now. Amen. We're asking. Amen. We are. There's no registration this week. Amen. So we're asking you to one, make sure you come out and to make sure that you sow into the revival. Amen. We know we have seasoned men of God coming to help us this week. Not only are they coming, but we have musical guests all week. Amen. We have, amen. The McCain group is coming. Amen. Shane Davis is coming. Amen. And our own Pastor Kentrell is going to be here. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be here. We're going to support. Amen. We're also introducing the ECC choir. Amen. They'll be here. Amen. We are excited about what God is doing. Amen. And rehearsal for all of the above. Praise team, choir, and liturgical, housekeeping. All that rehearsal will be on Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Please pay attention to realm. Amen. For instructions. Please stand to your feet as we get ready to sow. Come on. Whatever you're sowing, you're sowing. Amen. On Cash App, you're sowing. Amen. Dollar sign empowerment CC. Amen. If you're sowing via text, you're going to sow. Amen. To 73256. Amen. If you're sowing, amen, through our website, you're going to go to empowermentcct.org. Amen. But once you have it, amen, we want you to put your offering in your right hand. Pastor, I'm sowing electronically. Put that electronic device in your right hand. Amen. We're going to sow. We're going to sow together. Amen. Amen. I want you to put your giving in your right hand because as we give, we believe I mean, that as soon as we release it, that God is already placing what it is that we need in our hand. Amen. Amen. Come on. Today, I'm giving my tithe, my offerings, and my love gifts. This is my first, and this is my best. As we give today's offerings, we believe that we receive jobs raises and bonuses, benefit sales and commissions, settlements and estates, interest and income, rebates and returns, 
Checks in the mail. Lost money found. Bills paid off. Mortgages paid off. Car loans paid off. Student loans paid off. Bills paid off. Debts demolished. Royalties received. All of my needs are met. We receive the grace to walk in overflow and fulfillment. We expect more out of heaven than ever before. I receive my harvest now by faith in Jesus name. Amen and amen. You are now in the hands of our hospitality team. This week is our revival services. It's like our conference, our yearly conference. Amen. So we're not dressing down in these services. Amen. Amen. We about to get a cold front tomorrow. Amen. So it's going it's to feel nice and comfortable in here. Amen. So y'all make sure y'all come dress. Somebody say for church. Amen. Tell somebody dress for church. Dress for church. Amen. Come on. Stand to your feet. Amen. Just tell somebody on your left and on your right. It's so good to see you. Come on, tell them it's so good to see you. We remember we are, minus what I'm allowing today, we are in consecration. Amen. We are in consecration. Amen. That means, amen, after midnight, no meal until after three. Amen. Amen. And we're asking, amen, that you continue to stay in prayer. Amen. This week we are in prayer Monday through Wednesday on the conference line. Amen. Monday through Wednesday on the conference line. Tomorrow morning will be Monday morning manna with our overseer at 6 a.m. So we're asking everyone to join us on the conference line at 6 a.m. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's get ready to go. Amen. We are also happy to give you all free ice cream. Amen. On the way. Thank you for coming out in this heat. Amen. So when you get outside, you'll see the ice cream truck. He's been waiting so patiently. Amen. And there are, is free ice cream for everybody. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Father. And the young people are still selling snacks in the back. Please make sure to indulge them today. Amen. Amen. Come on, lift your hands, Father. For what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard, we are grateful. We decree and we declare that you've anointed us in our low place and that we will never be the same. Now, as we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence, we ask for you to go with us as we go with you. Love us, we will be loved. Keep us, we will be kept. Deliver us, and we shall be delivered. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Go in peace. God bless you.